Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day, and I want to say happy Friday. Uh, you know, we are just over a week away from resuming in-person worship services at our Sweetwater campus. And I don't know about you, but I am excited for that. Uh, it's been a long time coming, and, and so we are moving ahead and ready to open up again, God willing, in just a little over a week. So if you're uh, in Lake Havasu City and you want to join us, uh, it's going to be regular service times Saturday at, at 5, Sunday morning at 8, 9, 30, and 11 on September 5th and 6th. And I am excited to see you, but if you're choosing to watch online, I'm excited that you're choosing to be a part of Calvary any way that you do it. And uh, so I hope to see you there, or I hope you see me there either way. Hey, uh, today we're in Mark chapter 1, looking at verses 16 through 20, and we're talking about calling. Uh, do you remember when uh, in that day long ago before cell phones existed, when someone calling you at your house was uh, an incredible experience? I, I remember being a child and we'd be sitting at the table or watching TV and the phone would ring and there'd be a race to see who could answer the phone first. We were excited that somebody was calling us and uh, it was before caller ID, so you didn't know who it was, so there was that element of surprise. And, uh, and one of the questions that no one ever asked you when uh, you answered the phone is, uh, where are you? Because nowadays, on cell phones, everybody asks, where are you? Uh, anyway, we're talking about calling, and specifically about Jesus calling the first disciples. Uh, Mark chapter 1, it, it tells us this. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, Jesus saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed Jesus. And going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat, mending the nets. And immediately Jesus called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed Jesus. Calling. Uh, you see, Jesus calls us. Now, he, he, he calls us, if you will, to salvation, to forgiveness of sin, to eternal life. He, he invites us to respond to his, his glorious invitation to become children of God. And my hope and prayer is that everybody watching this has already experienced that calling on their life, and you've said yes to Jesus. Yes, you're my Lord and Savior. I confess you, and I surrender to you. But that's not where the journey ends. See, being a, being a Christian isn't just about saying, yes, Jesus, forgive me of my sins, but it's also understanding that Jesus calls us to a purpose. Jesus called, uh, you know, John, and, Andrew, John and, and James and Peter and Andrew and said, I want you to follow me and I want to make you fishers of men. What, what he's really saying is I want to change your life's purpose. I want to change your purpose. I want to give you a reason to live. And so Jesus calls us to a purpose, and I think it's the same purpose. Now, I mean, he didn't call us to be apostles, but he still calls us to follow, and he still calls us to this task of becoming fishers of men. Uh, and, and that purpose is this, at least here at Calvary, we, we put it this way, to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ through the love of his people and the power of his truth. We want men and women, boys and girls, to come to that life changing relationship with Jesus. And we want to be a part of it. That's our purpose as a church. Uh, sometimes people ask me why we don't do certain things. And, and my answer is because it doesn't help us accomplish the purpose that God put us here for. We're here to help people move from being lost to being found, help people move from being blind to being able to see. And that comes through a life changing experience with Jesus Christ. So that's our purpose. And, and I just want to dare you to frame your life in, in the context of that purpose. See, I think a lot of our frustrations, even as followers of Jesus, is that while we proclaim Jesus as Lord, we don't adopt Jesus as purpose. And Jesus wants us to embrace his purpose. And when we do that, it changes everything. So I dare you to frame your life in this focus of leading people to Jesus. What does that mean? That means that uh, you look at your marriage and you think, I need to lead my spouse to Jesus. You say, well, my husband or my wife already knows Jesus. Great. What are you doing to help them know him better? It, it means that I'm going to lead my children or my parents or my siblings to Jesus, my family to Jesus. What am I doing to help them 
and get closer to Jesus. It, it means I'm going to uh, lead my coworkers and my friends to that life-changing relationship with Jesus. When you, when you look at your job and you go, this is my mission field, this is where God has placed me and I have influence and I can help these people come to that life-changing experience with Jesus, it makes all the difference in the world. It, it means looking at the people that God gives you an opportunity to influence as part of your purpose. They're not just random encounters with strangers. They are God-ordained appointments that can make an eternal difference. I just dare you to start thinking about your life in that frame of going, hey, God's called me to be a fisher of men and women and boys and girls, and I am going to do whatever I can to lead them to that life-changing relationship with Jesus. And your life will change in its tone. It'll change in its meaning and its purpose, and you will find that there is a reason every single day to get up and serve the living God. Now, let me just share one more thought with this. It doesn't mean that you have to become a preacher or a pastor or some other church official or employee to accomplish this purpose. It does not mean that at all. Uh, just make the mission the focal point of your life and watch how God shows up. By the way, the people that I think are best at this are not pastors and deacons and teachers and stuff like that. The people I think are best at this are people who just, in the course of their job, point others to Jesus. I, I knew a physician who was extraordinary at this. And for a season here at Calvary, the, the number one person who reached more than anyone else was, was a doctor. Uh, right now at Calvary, it's a, it's a counselor. I meet people all the time that, that this counselor, who's not a Christian counselor, but just somebody who sees people and tries to help people, uh, and yet they end up finding their way to Calvary and finding their way to Christ and experiencing that life-changing difference. Uh, I'm probably unaware of people who serve as waitresses or clerks in stores or attorneys or school teachers that are doing the same thing. You see, that's being on mission. That's living your life mission-framed because you understand that God didn't just save you to forgive you, but he saved you to give you a purpose. I hope today that you are living out that purpose, and I hope wherever God leads you and whoever you come across, that you will bless them because you are in love with Jesus. God bless Calvary, and have a beautiful day.